college professors who are teaching online have to consider accessibility. And one of the standards that they have to meet is the WCAG 2.0 uh, AA standard. And there's an excellent tool online for checking that contrast between your text and your background color and meeting that accessibility standard. So I want to just tell you what this is and share it. It's the most amazing thing. Um, I've written down here the URL, the www.contrastchecker.com. This is courtesy of ACART Communications Incorporated. Fantastic um, accessibility contrast checker. And let's just dive right in. I'll show you how to use it. I'm going to reset the contrast checker right here. And um, just so that you know what you're looking at, we have a, a window right here that is open. Okay, and this window is, I'm just sitting on my Mac right here, but this window is just uh, the contrast checker, a free resource that is online. Uh, and on this side over here, I am looking at uh, parts of Photoshop. If I click on it, Photoshop, you'll see the other, the tools and things that are in Photoshop. So don't be disturbed if I click off and the tools disappear. It's just a, a function of working on a Mac. Okay. Um, Basically, I have my color picker up here, and I have two big swatches of color that I want to test on my contrast checker. I'm going to test the blue one first, and with my color picker open, if I hover over the blue, I see a little eyedropper tool, and if I click, it selects that color. If I click on the brown, it selects that color. So I'm going to click on the blue one first so we can use that, and then you'll see that in my color picker in Photoshop, it puts a little white circle right in this wonderful gradient, and in that gradient, it's, it's right on where that color blue is, and it shows you a sample of the blue in the new area, and then it gives you a bunch of color codes that indicate what the color is numerically. Okay, so you'll notice that we have a CMYK color code that's for printing, and you'll use that a lot if you're working with Illustrator and InDesign and stuff like that. In RGB over here, you will see um, the numerical values that uh, most people work with, like when they're using uh, making something that'll go on a web, like the websites and stuff like that. The number down here, this is a, a fantastic number that you're very familiar with if you you code because that's the the number value that you will use if you are using the background code right the html and stuff okay so with this in mind the contrast checker can be used with this code down here that's for web design and it can also be used with the rgb value and i'm going to show you both ways of doing it so you can get an understanding of how this works and how you can check if your contrast if the contrast in your text is compatible uh, with the standard that you need to follow for your school. Okay, so the first thing that you want to look at is if we look in the contrast checker itself, I'm going to click in here and we see a foreground color. The foreground color represents, generally speaking, your text, the text that you are going to be typing on something. Okay, right now it has all these zeros in it, which actually represent the numerical value for black. And you'll see that there's a sample of black text over here. And you'll see that the background color here is represented by Fs, and that is actually the default color that they throw in here, it's the numerical value for white. So if you have black text on a white background, uh, which is your standard unless you make changes to it, then it is showing you what the samples of that are at different sizes, common sizes. The first one is a sample text at 12 point. 12 point is your, uh, your P tag, your paragraph text. And so it's giving you, in lorem ipsum text, it's giving you that size and showing you what it would look like black text on a white background. They also give you a sample here in 18 point. Now 18 point is your header two value. Uh, your header one value would be 24 points. And obviously if your text passes at your header two or 18 point value, then it's going to pass at your header one as well. So they, they don't have to give you all the sizes, they just give you sizes that you have to measure by. Okay, so then you get your lorem ipsum text here in that size, 18 point black text on a white background. Okay, but what we want to test is we want to test that lovely blue color and we want that lovely blue color to be on a white background in this particular case. Okay, now you can change its background color too, just put in the, the value of the color that you want there. But we want it on a white background just to simplify for now. So what I do is I go into my Photoshop or any file that can give me these kind of numbers and I will click and drag on that and that to 
select it. Then I will right click and I will click copy. And then I will come up to my foreground color, click in the box and select everything that's in there. Right click and paste my lovely little number in there. And you notice this number is the same as that number, right? And then I'm on a Mac. So to get it to accept that value, I just hit the return key. And when I hit the return key, a cool thing happens. Number one, it suddenly turned my sample color into the color of that text. So this is that nice blue, right? Looks like a bluish gray at a smaller size. And it gives me that in both of these sample sizes. And then as you look down here, we have tons of circles and these circles are indicators for pass and fail. If it's red with an X in it, it's failed on a certain level. If it's green with a check mark, it is passed at some standard. So let's look at the standards themselves. What do they mean? If I put my mouse over this first one, it gives me a tooltip up here that explains it. It says, this is the WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.4.3 Pass Indicator for Minimum Contrast for Fonts Below 18 Points. Okay, so for fonts below 18 points, this is the minimum that it's got to do in order to pass this accessibility standard that they're giving. And this double A is the minimum standard that we need to meet. Okay, so um, that means that at this under 18 points would be like the 12 point sample. So our paragraph text, if we're typing that, it does not pass in this color blue. And so we can't use it for our paragraph text and meet our accessibility standards. If I move over to this AAA, this is an even higher standard that currently we don't actually have to pass for our schools, I don't believe, right? So this is the 1.4.6 pass indicator. In other words, enhanced contrast. You need even more contrast uh, for fonts that are below 80 points. So both of these first two indicators are still for that lower paragraph or 12 point type, uh, anything below 18 points. Okay, the next indicator is the minimum contrast for 18 points or over. Okay, so fonts, it says fonts over 18 points, but it's actually your H2 header and higher. So for my H2 header, this one would actually work, right? So my blue passes if I'm going to use the text as an H2 header size. Um, it doesn't pass if I use the high contrast um, parameter, which I don't actually have to for my school. Uh, and the next one, this is an excellent indicator. Whenever I'm using this contrast checker, I always want to have it work for my standard that I have to pass, my minimum standard, plus this one. Okay, this is a colors margin indicator. And it says this is based on brightness and color difference. A pass grade here means you are fully color compliant. That means that my AA standard right here, it's a minimum standard for my, you know, WCAG 2.0 thing. But if I want to make sure that the maximum amount of people who are going to see it at this size, my text at this size, will be able to see the contrast also, then I want to make sure this happens as well. So you actually want to get not just one of these buttons to light up, one of these first four, but you also want to get this one to light up at the same time with it. If it doesn't, I, I would increase the darkness usually of my color until this one lights up as well. Okay, that makes sure that, that I'm fully compliant. I hit a wider range, okay? All right, this last one here is color differential. And it actually says, how readable is your text for people that are completely colorblind? Um, and and this it doesn't pass for completely colorblind people in terms of showing a difference between uh, text. So for example, if I had two words that were exactly the same size and I was trying to make differentiate between the two based on color, well, this color blue isn't enough of a difference from like maybe black text that's right next to it. It's not enough of a difference to really help someone that's completely colorblind. You'd have to use something else in addition, like make it a header two next to a very small, uh, maybe a paragraph type or something, you know, or underline it or bold it or do something else crazy to it to make it um, be something that can be differentiated by someone that's colorblind. Now, if I want to check out this colorblind thing, I can go up to this button here that says see grayscale and I can click on that and it shows me what it looks like in grayscale. And as you can see, um, this is what a colorblind person would see. They wouldn't see that slight blue tint to it. They'd see this gray. 
Okay, I'm going to switch back to my RGB color by clicking this again. Okay, and I could use this color for my header twos and header ones, but not for my paragraph type. Let's take a look at the color brown over here that I've got and see how it does. Okay, I'm going to go into uh, my color picker here and I'm going to come back out with my little eyedropper tool. And I'm going to click in the brown to select the brown. Now I have this brown selected. And what I'm going to do this time is I could use the same color code down here, but I am going to use the RGB value just so you can see how that works in our contrast checker. So I'm going to click on the contrast checker and I'm going to reset it. Okay, click the reset button puts everything back to its default value and then in order to use RGB I'm going to come up here to the foreground color and I, I can't really type it in here but I can click this color box over here which indicates the RGB values I click it and it shows me a color picker and obviously by the way I can pick colors within here too I can click on something in here it will select my RGB values and I can figure out my RGB color values that I can then put into my website stuff if I want to as well. But we're not using it that way. What we're doing right now is we're getting the RGB values from our uh, Photoshop and we're going to plug them in here. So I got 105, 61, and 3. So I'm going to come over to my R and I'm going to put in my 105. I'm going to put in my G um, and it's going to be 61. And I'm going to put in my blue uh, value, which is 3. And then I'm going to say OK. Okay, so now I put that color value in, right? And you will see that it is now trying to do something. Now I have, let me click this thing right here. What I've got is all of these things working, right? And it is passing on all levels. So my brown is doing really well. It doesn't matter what standard. And what you'll notice as you try for that contrast picker is the darker the color that you mess with, um, the more you will uh, get that thing to pass your contrast checker. Okay, so I hope this is very helpful to you and I hope you have fun using the contrast checker. It's an excellent tool.